Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 20 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video and in the next video, I'm going to show you how to access and use most of the tracks area edit tools in Logic. I'm splitting this into two parts because the video would probably be over 30 minutes long if I did this all in one video. So I'm just shortening it for brevity. And I'm also going to cover the two most important tools, in my opinion, in this video, and I'll save the other tools for the next video. So in this video, I'll focus on the pointer tool and the marquee tool. Again, these are what I consider to be the two main edit tools in Logic's tracks area. The reason why I like the pointer and marquee tools so much is that about 90% of the time, I can get by by just using these two tools. Before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Do you wanna take your music to the next level? Are you a musician looking for a collaborative platform to share your work and receive feedback from your peers or bandmates? Look no further than Boombox.io. Boombox allows musicians to upload their tracks and leave time-stamped feedback for each other. This makes it super easy to collaborate on music remotely from the comfort of your own home studio. Head over to Boombox.io and sign up today and get 10 gigabytes of free storage. Your music will thank you. Okay, so before I show you what the edit tools do, I want to quickly show you how to access these tools. There's a couple of different ways that you can access your edit tools in Logic. Now, as I've mentioned before, the left tool is the left click tool. So this is just your main tool that you can access with your left click function on your mouse. The one on the right is actually the command click tool. So this means that when I hold the command key, this will switch from the left click tool, which is the pointer tool, over to the marquee tool. Or if I switch this over to the scissors tool, now I can toggle between pointer and scissors. Or if I go to the eraser tool and the scissors tool. So now I'm going from scissors to eraser. So again, it's left click and command click. Now, if you want more than two tools, there is a way to get three tools in Logic. If you go up to Logic Pro, Settings or Preferences, then go to General, and then from here, you're going to go to the Editing tab right here. And down here, there's an option for the right mouse button. And you can set this to a number of different things. By default, it opens a shortcut menu, but you can actually assign this to a tool. And with this option turned on, you'll see you now have three different edit tools, the left click tool on the left, the command click tool in the middle, and the right click tool on the right. So this means I can move things with the left click, use my marquee tool or the middle tool while holding command. And then if I right click, this will access the scissors tool or whatever other tool is assigned to that right tool. However, I don't really find myself using this option because I really like to have that right click feature where I can access a shortcut menu. So I typically will turn this option off because I just don't use it. I'd much prefer to open a shortcut menu than to have a third tool. That's the way I do things, but if you find yourself needing a third tool, that option is there. Now, another way to access tools other than just manually selecting them up here is you can press T anywhere in the tracks area. So you're pressing T on your keyboard, and this will open up a secondary tool menu. So if I wanna switch from pointer to solo, I can press T again, I can jump to the scissors tool, press T again, go to the text tool, press T again, and jump to the pointer tool. And if I want to assign my command click tool, I can press T and then hold command and select another tool. So I just switched over to the text tool there for my secondary tool, press T, hold command, switch maybe to the fade tool, then I can press T, hold command, and select the marquee tool again to switch back to the marquee tool. Now, one other way to access these tools from this menu is to use these shortcuts, these built-in shortcuts. I don't typically use these too much, but if you memorize some of these shortcuts, it can make things pretty quick. So the pencil tool is P, so I press P. Then I can press T and S to go to the solo tool, T and X to go to the flex tool, T and G to go to the gain tool, and then T and T again to go back to the pointer tool. Really the only time I like to use these shortcuts is when I need to quickly switch back to the pointer tool. So it, it is helpful for that if I have like another tool selected, I can just quickly press T, T, and it'll jump back to the pointer tool. So that's 
another way to access these tools. Okay, so now that you know how to access the tools, let's talk about the tools themselves. And again, we're gonna mainly focus on the pointer tool and marquee tool in this video. I'm gonna go through all of these functions pretty quickly and pragmatically, as many of the tools have multiple functions, and there are some functions that I can't show you yet because we haven't talked about things like flex time and automation, which are also affected by these tools. So when we get to those videos, we'll talk about those topics. Okay, so the pointer tool. You already know that you can click and drag to move things around. You can also hold option to duplicate regions, just like so. You can click on things and press delete to delete regions. And keep in mind that all of these edit functions are typically going to be tied to your grid snap. So if I turn off my grid snap, I can now move this around freely on the grid. Now, when you're duplicating regions, you can duplicate them on the track or you can duplicate them down to another track. So for example, if I were to duplicate this track here and then duplicate the region down, I can duplicate that audio down to another track. However, one thing you'll notice is when I move this down or if I try to duplicate it down, especially if you have grid snap turned off, it can be kind of difficult to keep the alignment perfect. So there is a shortcut for this as well. If you move a region down and then hold shift, this will keep the alignment from the previous position. This also works when you're trying to duplicate a region. So if I hold option and shift, there we go, it'll keep its original alignment. So if you duplicate something and you see it's falling out of alignment, just press shift or hold shift, and it'll jump back to its original position and keep its original alignment on the grid. You can also copy and paste. So if I select a region and hit command C to copy, set the playhead over here somewhere, select the track I want to paste it to, and then press command V, I can do that as well. You can also do this with multiple regions. So if I select all of these, press command C, set my playhead over here somewhere, maybe bar 11, command V to paste. The one thing you just gotta remember is that the region will be pasted to whatever track is in focus. So right now this software instrument track is in focus, but I'm copying this region, so I'll copy it. If I set my playhead over here and hit command V, it's gonna paste that to the wrong track because I have that track in focus. So if I make sure that this track is in focus and then paste it, it'll go to the correct track. So you just have to keep in mind which tracks are in focus and which aren't. And you can also cut too. If you wanna completely cut something, you can press Command X. And then I could just go somewhere else, hit Command V to paste it in. Okay, so those are sort of the moving and duplicating and copy paste features of the pointer tool but there are some deeper functions as well. I'm gonna go ahead and drag over these, all three of these, and hold option and duplicate them a couple times. And remember, you can drag over regions and press Command R to repeat them as well. One other function I wanna show you is that you can actually separate regions just by setting the playhead. I know this is not really a pointer tool function, but I wanna show you anyway. If you make a selection on a region and then set the playhead somewhere, and then you press Command T, this will separate that region. So notice it didn't separate this one, it didn't separate this one, but it did separate this one because that's the region that I selected. Likewise, if I click on this one, hit Command T, it'll make a separation right there at the playhead. Now there are quicker ways to make separations, but that's one way you can do it. You can also select multiple regions that are not all right next to each other or they're not adjacent. I've already shown you that you can drag over multiple regions to make a selection, but what if I wanted to just select this region, this region, and this region? If you make a selection, then hold shift, you can select just those regions and you can either move them out of the main selection, just like so, or you can hold option and you can drag them out as well. And again, all of these movements are snapping to my grid snap value up here. Now, earlier I said that if you hold shift while you move a region, it'll keep its original position. This is a little bit different when you're working with MIDI and pattern regions, especially if you're duplicating. The shift function on its own works the same. So if I were to like duplicate this disco pick bass track, and then maybe this is over here somewhere, and I wanna drag it down, if I just drag it down and hold shift, it keeps its position, that's no problem at all. 
However, if you duplicate a region while holding shift, you'll get this little arrow icon here. And what this does is it creates what's called an alias. This also works for pattern regions. So again, if I duplicate and hold shift, this will create an alias for the pattern region as well. So what aliases are is they're a copy of a region, but they're tied to the original region. Let me just take this back a couple steps and let's work with a smaller selection, maybe something like two bars and length here on the pick base. If I simply duplicate this region over just by holding option, and then I decide I want to change a few of the notes inside of that MIDI region, it only changes those notes for that MIDI region. It doesn't change these notes over here. However, if I make an alias instead, so hold option and shift, and then if I go in here and change those notes inside of this MIDI region, this actually also changes the notes inside of the alias. So again, the alias is tied to the original MIDI or pattern region. So you can hear that those six notes there that I transposed up have also been transposed up in the alias. Whereas if I had just made a copy, they would not have been changed. Now, one last thing I wanna show you with the pointer tool that's not really a pointer tool function, it's more of a selection function, is that you can actually transpose regions by selecting them and then pressing option up or down. So for example, if I wanted to transpose this baseline up a couple of half steps, I could select the region with the pointer tool and then press option up a couple times. And you'll see this little plus two show up on the region that's showing that I've transposed this region up by two semitones. Or maybe I wanna go down by two semitones. And this also works for octaves. If I hold shift option up or down, I can go up an octave, so plus 12, or down an octave, or down multiple octaves. I just keep pressing shift option up or down to do that. And this also works for pattern regions. So if I wanted to shift this up an octave, shift option up, Maybe I'll take it back down. And the reason why I didn't say plus 12 there is because I've already transposed this region down by four semitones. So plus 12 minus four is plus eight. Okay, so next up, let's explore the marquee tool a bit. So the marquee tool is simultaneously a selection tool, a trim tool, and also a deletion tool but it can be used for other things like cropping regions as well. So there's a lot of functionality built into the marquee tool. And I would say that other than the pointer tool, it's the most versatile tool in logic. Again, so this is why I use these two tools so much because they're so versatile and there are so many secondary functions built into them. So the main thing you can do with the marquee tool again is just to make selections. And again, your selection will snap to the grid if you are indeed using a grid snap up here. If you turn this off, you can sort of freely make selections as well. A couple of things you can do with your selections is you can drag over a selection and you can click on it and it'll actually separate that selection from the rest of the region. So I could pull this region over here if I wanted to or I could duplicate it over if I wanted to. You don't even really need to make a separation though. If you just drag over this and hold option and drag, it'll duplicate that selection without separating the original region. This is also really helpful if you want to repeat a section within a region, in particular with MIDI regions, if you want to repeat a section without having to go into the piano roll editor and edit anything. So for example, if I set my snap to beat here, and I wanted to repeat this section right here, I could just click to separate, drag over this area, hit delete to delete it, and then hold option and drag this over. And now I've repeated this section. Or maybe if I wanted to change up my drum pattern here a little bit, what I could do is take out one of these kick drums, for example. I'll go to division snap, drag over that kick, and then I'll just replace it with maybe a hi-hat from over here. I'll hold option and drag it over. 
and I've changed up that drum pattern. Or maybe I want to isolate a drum sample from the loop or move it to another location like that. So there's a lot of really cool little editing tricks you can do like this with the marquee tool. In addition to making selections and making separations, you can also copy and paste with the marquee tool. So for example, if I select all of this and then press command C, then come over here to bar 10, hit command V, I can paste that section in over there. And because the marquee tool also functions as a deletion tool, you can also use it as a trim tool. So I find this really helpful for doing heads and tails editing, just like so. The way you'd normally do this with the trim tool that's just built into the region. So this is a common theme in Logic. You'll see that there are two or three different ways to do just about every edit function in Logic. It's one of those things where you just kind of have to pick the workflow that you like best. And while we're talking about trimming and deleting, you can also use the marquee tool for cropping. So for example, let's say I want to crop out these four bars and I want to get rid of all of this and all of this. If you make a selection like this and then press command backslash, this will crop the regions to the marquee selection. So again, that's command backslash. That is the backslash key that is just above the return key. In a previous video, I demonstrated that with the pointer tool, you can right click or control click out here on the timeline and you can create blank MIDI regions and you can also create blank pattern regions. By default, pattern regions are going to be four bars in length and we can't really control that. And by default, MIDI regions are one bar in length. However, if you use the marquee tool and make a selection, like maybe I want a six bar MIDI region, you right click and create a new MIDI region and it'll create a MIDI region that is that exact size. However, this does not work for pattern regions. Your pattern regions are always going to start at four bars. Now, one last thing I wanna show you with the marquee tool that is actually kind of a separate editing function. There's actually a special marquee ruler that can help when you're trying to edit all of the tracks in a project. So if you go up to view and then go down to tracks here, there's a secondary ruler. The secondary ruler just shows you time but there's also a marquee ruler here. And if you turn on your marquee ruler, it's actually kind of easy to miss this. You'll see this extra little sort of lane up here below the main ruler. And if you click and drag on this, this will sort of act like a marquee tool for all of the tracks in your project. So if I wanted to delete everything from bar three to bar four, I could make that selection here and then press delete or maybe I wanted to cut this out and paste it somewhere else, you could do that without having to drag the marquee tool over all of the tracks in the project. And it doesn't look you know, that too inconvenient now, but if you had a project that had 20 or 30 or 50 tracks, that's a lot of tracks that you have to drag over like this, and you make this motion to drag over everything. Whereas if you just use the marquee ruler, you can select everything in the project and make an edit just like so without having to drag over everything with the marquee tool. So that's the marquee ruler. I don't use it a lot, but it is there if you're trying to make sort of global edits to everything in your project. Okay, so those are the main functions of the pointer tool and marquee tools and also how to access your tools in Logic. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you for the support and thanks for watching.